Hi guys, welcome to Pilates. I'm Rachel. For those of you who don't know me, I think I recognize a lot of your names here. Um, we are going to be doing this class uh, today without too many props. Uh, you're going to want to have a mat, uh, maybe a towel next to you, but we're not going to need any props other than those today. Uh, as always, follow along. And if you do get lost or if I'm talking a little fast, maybe close your eyes, sit back and take a little bit of a breather. Take your time to listen to what I'm saying and just do your best to follow along with whatever speed that you can. Um, all right, so we're going to go ahead and get started on our mats. We're going to start standing in the center of your mat. Your mat's going to be horizontal and you're facing your screen. We're going to get our feet hip width apart. The toes are gonna to be pointing straight forward as much as possible. We're gonna to try to make sure that those kneecaps are lined up with the second and third toes pointing straight forward. If you wanna picture a string at the crown of your head rising all the way up toward the ceiling, then picture yourself gently floating down until your feet touch the floor. We're gonna rock back and forth toward the heels, toward the toes. Back and forth. Picture that string at the crown of the head still pulling you up toward the ceiling. We're going to take the hands to the midsection. If you press your fingertips into your abdomen a little bit as you come towards your toes and back towards your heels, as you hit those ends of the ranges where you're stable over that uh, center of balance, you're going to feel those muscles kick in in your midsection to try to pull you back toward the middle. We'll come back getting our weight right over the front of the ankle joints. And now let's shift the weight side to side. Again, we're just warming up all of these muscles that we're gonna be using throughout the class today. As you shift from one side to the other, you might feel these muscles in your sides wake up a little bit. You can put your thumbs on your back. You'll feel those areas working a little bit as you shift from one foot to the other. And let's go ahead and make some circles around your base of support toward the toes, toward the outsides of the foot, and then back towards your heels. And we'll go the other direction as well. Last circle, then we'll make our way right to the middle. Hold it there. With the arms down by the sides, we're gonna lift our toes up, spread them apart, and take them down to the floor one at a time, starting with those pinky toes, then moving in sequence until those big toes press into the floor. We're gonna clasp our palms, reach them all the way up to the ceiling. Take a big breath in, and we'll exhale, taking a tall side bend to each side. One more time to each. Lifting up and over to that other side. We'll reach those arms straight to the ceiling, and then take them down by our sides as we move to one of the edges of your mat. You wanna have most of the mat in front of you now. We're gonna keep those feet hip width apart. Take the hands right to our hip bones and keeping the back nice and still, we're gonna send the tailbone back and the crown of the head forward toward the wall in front of you. So we're in a fairly flat back, straight back position here with the knees bent as much as they need to be to allow for some stretch through the hamstrings without getting a pull into that lower back. Holding this position here with your legs and with your trunk, we're gonna draw those arms down toward the floor. They're just hanging vertically. And from here, we're gonna squeeze, bending the elbows, bring those shoulder blades together behind the back, and then drop them down toward the floor. Squeeze and bring them down. Squeeze, bring them down. One more time, squeeze them back. We're gonna hold them there. And we're gonna take one arm forward and one arm back behind your body and switch them up, making a long diagonal with those arms, lining them up with your trunk, and with your head. Reach overhead. We'll reach overhead with that other arm one more time. And then taking that second arm back by your side, we'll take a big breath in. And we'll exhale, folding those hands down toward the mat, bending the knees as much as we need to to get those hands toward the floor. They could be all the way straight for a big hamstring stretch. They can be bent with your bottom down toward the floor if you need to take some pressure off your back and your thighs. From here, we're gonna walk forward toward an inverted B position, down dog type position. We're gonna pedal the feet out. One heel comes down as the other one's lifted. 
and we'll switch it up. Switch and press, switch and press. As we move those legs, think about gently drawing your belly towards your spine and keeping those elbows and ears lined up as best you can. Let's press both heels to the floor. Take a big breath in. Exhaling, we're gonna come forward to a tall plank position. Moving one knee to the floor if you need to take some pressure off of any part of your body that's on the mat. And we're gonna shift the body weight side to side. Hand to hand, pressing the floor away with your hands. Let's shift one more time to each side. We'll come back to plank, both knees down if they're not already down on the floor. And we'll do a few cats and cows just to loosen up that trunk, get that mobility going for some exercises we're gonna be doing later. Taking ourselves back to neutral, now we'll wag the tail from side to side. Bring a hip and a shoulder closer to each other. And the same thing on the other side. Let's take it right back to all fours. We'll bring the feet together, the knees apart, and draw your bottom back towards your heels, walking those hands toward the front of your mat. We're gonna drop the shoulder blades down your back and slightly forward toward the floor and take that forehead down toward the mat for a big breath in. Feel your rib cage expand as you inhale. Feel it draw back toward midline as you breathe out. We're gonna shift the weight over those forearms and now take the legs back behind the body so we're resting on the upper thighs. We're gonna try to draw those shoulder blades down and send your breastbone toward the wall in front of you for a little bit of an arch through that upper back. Lower back is staying relatively still and the belly is pulled up towards your spine. From here, we'll take an inhale and on the exhale, we'll prop ourselves up just a little bit lower on those thighs, pulling the belly up toward the ceiling. And we're gonna shift the weight from forearm to forearm, pushing those hands and those elbows and those shoulder blades toward the floor. We'll take them right back to the middle and we'll squeeze the shoulder blades together behind the back and then press them forward toward the floor. Squeeze and press, squeeze and press. Last two, press, last one, press. Take a big breath in and exhaling, we'll go ahead and lie down on the mat, turning over onto your back, lining your heels up with your sit bones. Feet, knees, and hips are equal distance apart from each other. And we're gonna rock through our clock face. We're gonna picture 12 by the breastbone, six by the pubic bone three and nine on either side. And we're gonna shorten that pubic bone towards your breastbone, lengthen the pubic bone down towards your heels and rock back and forth between those two positions, gently nodding your chin down towards your neck and maintaining that little chin nod as we let the pelvis do its motion. Let's take ourselves back to neutral as if you could balance the little marble right in your belly button. And we're going to rock the pelvis from three o'clock to nine o'clock, keeping those legs as still as they can, letting the pelvis move on stationary legs. One hip toward the ceiling, opposite hip toward the floor, and switch it through three to nine, two more times. Last time, three o'clock to nine o'clock. We'll take it right back to the middle. And as we come back to that neutral position with your belly button drawn in, Picture the curves in your back. There should be a little curve in your back. You should maybe be able to get your hand underneath your lower back. And you should be able to get your hand behind your neck. We wanna make sure those curves are preserved as we do our next few exercises. So we're gonna draw the belly gently down to the spine as if you're tightening the little seatbelts and muscles right underneath that navel. And from here, we're gonna hold that contraction. Nod your chin towards your neck. Lift your head up off the floor, gazing towards your knees. Lower the chin, maintaining that nod, and release the chin. Nod and lift, lower, release. Nod and lift, lower, release. Keep this motion going. If your body feels good doing this, you're welcome to curl up into a small crunch. Nod and lift, maybe the shoulder blades come up. Lower and release. Last time, nod and lift. Hold it there if you can. We're gonna bring those knees up to tabletop position. Hold them there, we're gonna press the hands into the thighs. 
Maybe the head stays lifted, and maybe your head comes down to the mat and you maintain that nod. We're pushing into the thighs until we feel some work between those ribs and that pubic bone. And we're gonna straighten and bend the knees, keeping that pressure through those thighs. See so if you can bring your feet and knees a little closer together. Again, we could nod and lift and hold it there. We're gonna straighten those legs to the ceiling as best you can. You wanna feel some stretch through the thighs. You can have them bent if you need to. And with those arms hovered up off the floor, the head up or down, we're gonna pat our hands up and down. Inhaling for five, four, three, two, one, and exhaling. Inhale, five, four, three, two, one, and exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Keep that pattern going, realizing that you could make it more challenging by bringing those legs out in front of you farther. You could keep them up toward the ceiling. You could bend your knees. Your head could be down, or we could have a kickstand. Let's flip your palms up toward the ceiling, press that air toward the ceiling. Again, finding a variation with those legs and with your head position that gives you the biggest challenge that matches your ability. Breathe it in, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Pull both knees in, bring that upper body down if it's been up, and we're gonna roll the shoulders back and down. And particularly if your head has been up, let's look over one shoulder. Let's look over the other shoulder. We'll take it right back to the middle and we'll reset that chin down toward the neck. We're gonna keep a hold of that knee that's closest to your screen and slide the opposite leg up straight in front of you. Hold it there. If you hold on just below your kneecap, kind of right above at the top of your shin, keep your arms soft like you're holding a beach ball and you're welcome to nod and curl up, gazing toward that knee. With the belly drawn down, we're gonna lift that straight leg slightly off the floor and take that straight leg side to side. Again, your head could be lifted or your head could be down. You could also hold on behind your thigh if you wanna take a little pressure off that knee joint. We'll paint one more line on the wall in front of you, taking that leg side to side. And then we'll lower the upper body down and take that leg straight up to the ceiling to give that hamstring a stretch. Again, as straight as is, you're able to bring it. You can hold on behind your thigh, your ankle, your knee, whatever's working. Keeping a hold of that leg that's stretching up toward the ceiling, we're gonna keep that belly drawn in and we're gonna lower that lower foot to the floor and lift it up just a couple inches. Lower and lift, again, you could raise your upper body, bringing your nose toward your knee. We're gonna bring the head down if it's been up, bring that leg down closest to the floor, down to the floor all the way, and bring those arms to the ceiling. Keeping the pelvis still, we're gonna take that top leg side to side. As big of a range as you can take it through while maintaining a stable pelvis. So your navel is still facing the ceiling, both cheeks are on the floor. We're gonna make some circles. As big as you want to, or as small as they need to be to keep that pelvis nice and still. You could hover that other leg off the floor for a bit more challenge and we'll switch directions. You could also take those arms back overhead for a bit more challenge. We're gonna do one more here. That leg comes to the ceiling. We're gonna hold on behind that thigh, pull it into your chest and switch them up. Opposite leg comes in toward the chest. Leg that we just stretched is gonna now be resting on the floor. Tighten up through the front of that straight thigh, feeling a little stretch through the hip flexors. Hold it there. Holding on to that opposite shin. We can curl the upper body up if you want, bringing your nose towards your knee. And we're gonna lift that straight leg up off the mat and take it side to side. Paint that horizontal line on the wall in front of you. Pick a head position that's working for you, up or down. We'll stretch that leg forward again. Hold it there. Take that left leg up to the ceiling, dropping the other leg to the floor. And we'll bring the head down as we move through a hamstring stretch for your opposite side. You could flex and point, you could always wiggle that knee a little bit, hold on behind that thigh or leg at whatever position gives you the best stretch that's working for you. We'll hold it there, drawing that belly down. We're gonna lift that other leg up and down, small range. Again, you could raise your head if you want. 
Let's lift one more time. Lower one more time. We'll take the upper body down and bring those arms to the ceiling. And we're gonna take that other leg and move it side to side. Paint that line on the ceiling. Maybe use this opportunity to challenge your range a little more. Maybe you could take this side an inch farther than you did the other side. We can hover that bottom foot up off the floor. We could make some circles. Top, our arms could be back overhead. You could even have your head raised a bit. And we'll switch directions, circle the other way. Last one. Bring that leg to the ceiling, hold out behind that leg again. If you want, you can curl up. Whether the head's up or down, we're gonna move through some straight leg stretch. We'll move the opposite leg up, the other leg down, we get a pulse, that thigh towards your face, and we'll switch it up. Same deal if the head's down with a little pulse. Same deal if the knees are bent with a little pulse. Same thing if both feet are on the floor and we're lifting one foot up and down. We're gonna do one more time to each side. We're gonna pull both knees into the chest, roll that upper body down, and rock ourselves side to side. Coming back to the middle, we'll roll both shoulders back and down, take the arms down by the sides. We'll bring ourselves to that 90 tabletop position. And then if you got more room in those hamstrings, we're gonna straighten the legs toward the ceiling. We're gonna bring those arms up as well and drop your blades to the floor. And we'll take both legs side to side together, letting one side of your pelvis lift up off the floor and then translating it to your other side. Upper body's gonna stay as still as you can keep it. And we're gonna maintain a lot of that upper body stability by dropping your shoulder blades toward the mat. We're gonna make some circles, moving both feet together counterclockwise and clockwise. You wanna kick it up a little bit, your head could raise. We're gonna bring those legs back to the ceiling and we're gonna move the legs in circles independently of each other. Through a range where you can keep your trunk nice and still. Again, it could be a small range, it could be a big range. And we'll switch directions for four. Here's three. Arms could come overhead for more of a challenge. Here's two. Here's one. We're going to keep those legs to the ceiling and the arms down by the sides. Flex up your feet. Bend those knees back to tabletop. And with that belly down your spine, we're going to take that. Exhale, lower the mat. Inhale them back to tabletop. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift, arms up to the ceiling, Depression. exhale, lower the heels, arms back over, inhale to the center. Another progression would be legs straight. Exhale, arms and legs away from the body, inhale to the ceiling. Last two, whatever progression you've chosen, lift. Last one, arms back, legs forward. Inhale to the ceiling, we'll pull both in, rock everything side to side. Taking them right back to the middle, we're going to roll those shoulders back and down. For a minute, and take a brief rest. I'm seeing a little bit of a question through my chat. Okay. And I think I'm having some internet issues. Let me check. Okay. All right. I'm going to do my best with this to see. Um, my connection has generally been okay today. I'm going to apologize to you guys if it's not, and I'm going to do my best to keep going with this. So let's go ahead and move on, and I will apologize in advance if we have some more connectivity issue. I'm going to do my best. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and come back down to the mat. We'll bring those arms back to tabletop, legs back up to tabletop as well. And from here, we're going to take the right arm back, left leg forward, and switch it up. Keep that going at your own speed. 
We're going to do two more here on each side. Last one. And then we're going to straighten the leg to the ceiling and keep that opposite leg out in front of you. And we're going to alternate this way, taking one forward, opposite leg back, and switch it up again. We'll do one more time on each side. And then pulling both knees in, we'll give them a hug. Take those feet down to the floor, arms down by the sides, take a big breath in. And on the exhale, we're gonna rock through our pelvic clock, 12 to six. Taking it back to the center, we're gonna go three to nine. Take it back to the center for a big breath in. And as we exhale, we're gonna move up to bridge. Hold it at the top here, stretching those knees away from the rest of your body. Trying to feel a stretch through the top of the thighs into those hip flexors, and we should feel those glutes working. We'll take a big breath in here, and then exhale, bridging it down. Inhale, exhale, bridge it up. Breathe it in, exhale, bridge it down. Let's bridge it up and hold our next one up at the top. We're gonna try to keep the thighs and the hips at the same level they are right now. And we're gonna go up and down the toes, lifting the heels, lowering the heels, lift and lower. We could take those arms to the ceiling for a different challenge. We could take those arms back overhead for a slightly different challenge as well. Last two. Last one. Heels come down. We're going to arc those arms to the ceiling. Bring them down to the floor in front of us. Take a big breath in and we'll exhale down and out of our bridge. Big breath in at the bottom. Exhale, bridge it up, holding at the top, and we're going to rotate. We're going to drop one hip down and lift it back up, and then the other hip down and back up. And again, we're going to switch through at our own speed. Notice the difference in how much you're pressing one foot into the floor versus the other as you rotate. We're going to keep that going. Lift up to the ceiling, take a big breath in. Exhaling, we'll come back down. When that tailbone touches the floor, we'll take an inhale again. And we'll exhale up to the top. We're gonna to move on to marching. If marching is too much for you, you can stick with the rotation. Otherwise, we're gonna take a knee up, extend that leg to the ceiling, bend it back, take the foot down. Knee up, toe to the ceiling, back to tabletop, foot down. Keep that going or stick with your rotation. Trying to keep that pelvis lifted as fast as possible and keep this in the glutes versus your hamstrings. We're trying to keep those heels anchored to the floor throughout this motion. We're going to take the feet back down to the floor, take a big breath in. Exhale, bridging down. We're going to move through our pelvic clock, 12 to 6. We'll take it back to the middle, 3 to 9. Take it back to the middle, big breath in. Exhale, bridge it up and hold. One leg comes up to tabletop, and from here we're going to do three single leg bridges, lowering down, lifting up. Last two, lifting up. Last one, lifting up. We'll lower it back down, and let's go ahead and switch. We're going to bring ourselves up to our bridge, opposite leg to tabletop. We're going to lower and lift, lower and lift. Last one, lift it up. We're going to take that second foot down to the floor for a big breath in, pressing through both heels. We'll lengthen ourselves back down to the floor and we're going to cross one leg over the other, pulling both knees into your chest and we'll rock the body side to side. Let's take it back to the middle and we'll switch it up. Again, pulling both knees into the chest. Take some gentle rocks side to side. Let's go ahead and unwind, pulling both knees in. We're gonna take our feet down to the floor and straighten those legs as best you can along the mat.
Let's hold them there. Let's take those arms up to the ceiling. Your palms are going to be about shoulder width apart and they're going to face in on each other. Go ahead and wiggle into the ground. Make sure you feel comfortable on your back. And if, if you're feeling a strain anywhere, if your back doesn't feel great or the hips feel too tight in this position, feel free to bend your knees up again. We're going to take those fingertips, stretch them up to the ceiling, wrapping those blades around the front of your body. And keeping the elbows straight, we're going to drop those blades down toward the floor. Reach them up, lower them down. Reach them up, lower them down. Reach them up, lower them down. One more time, reach them up, lower them down. From here, we're going to keep those arms and legs nice and still. We're going to draw your chin gently toward the neck, letting the back of the neck lengthen into the mat. Drop your breastbone down. Anchor it down with the mat, make it feel nice and heavy. Drop those lowest ribs down toward the floor as well. Feeling some activity through those upper abdominals. We're gonna drop that belly button down as well. And now we're gonna take those arms back overhead as far as we can, keeping that chin nod, the breastbone down, the lowest ribs down, and that navel drawn toward your spine. If your thumbs touch the floor, just hover them up a little bit higher so we keep some activity through those shoulder muscles. And we're gonna alternate. We're gonna lift one foot up and down and then the other. The idea here is to keep those legs moving, but keep your trunk and pelvis as still as you can. If you had a marble balancing in that navel, you wouldn't want it to move. If you wanna make this harder, you could lift one leg up and then bring it down as the other one comes up. So we have a period where neither foot's on the floor. Keep moving at your own speed, and we're gonna start bringing those arms toward the ceiling. Once they're to the ceiling, we'll take both feet down. Take an inhale, bring those arms up overhead. And an exhale, holding in there. One more time, big breath in. On the exhale, we're gonna bring those arms down, and we're gonna roll over, resting on our stomachs. We're gonna have our palms facing the floor, one hand on top of the other. Elbows out to your sides. Once that forehead's resting on the floor, you can see if you need to adjust your feet. You can bring them apart a little bit if your low back isn't super, super happy in, on your stomach. We can bring them all the way together, tightening up the front of the thighs. And from here, we're going to gently draw your belly button up and away from the floor. Navel comes towards your spine like there's a little needle and thread pulling it up there. Try to do that and relax your bottom at the same time if that's possible. It's fine if your skin still touches the mat. We're gonna hold that navel the spine contraction and we're gonna float the forehead up off of your hands. Hold them there. From here, now squeeze your bottom and we're gonna flutter kick those legs. Little tiny kicks. Keep that belly pulled in towards your spine and see if you wanna progress it, you can bring your arms up so your forehead and your hands are touching now. Elbows are off the floor. If you want to make it more challenging, those arms come up overhead, maybe in a Y, maybe all the way overhead, and we can add arm movements and go for a swim. We're going to pause those arms, bringing your hands by your ears and your elbows by your sides. Let's keep flutter kicking those legs. Now we're going to pause the legs and click your heels together. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's bring those feet to the floor. That belly stays pulled in. Your breastbone is slightly raised toward the wall in front of you. And we're gonna take the arms back by the sides. Flip your palms over and press them toward the floor. From here, we're gonna squeeze those blades. Pulse the, palm, the back of the hands toward the ceiling for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold that position. We can pulse here that same way. If you want to make it more challenging, those arms come out on a T and we pulse for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold it here. Big breath in. On the exhale, those hands are going to come down underneath your shoulders. We'll push it up to hands and knees for a few cats and cows. Easing our way out of that extended position on our bellies and up to do some work for our arms and shoulders. Let's take ourselves back to neutral, the back of the head, the middle back, and that tailbone are lined up with each other now. We're gonna gently nod your chin towards your neck and look over one shoulder and look over the other shoulder. 
Try that a few times. Make sure that neck feels relaxed. If you need to adjust anything, think about dropping your shoulders away from your ears. All right. We're going to shift the weight back toward the heels, forward toward the fingers, back and forth. One more time back and up toward that upright position again. And we're going to shift the weight from side to side. And we're going to make some circles around that base of support, pushing the floor away with the heels and the hands. Switching direction, clockwise to counterclockwise, or counterclockwise to clockwise, depending on how you started. We're going to bring ourselves right back to the middle, and the arm closest to the screen is going to come out to the side. We'll reach it up, and we're going to thread the needle. Reach that arm through between your opposite arm and knee, and stretch it toward the wall. We'll take it up and out, stretch it through, last two, and reach, last one, and reach. Let's take it back up to hands and knees, hold it there. We'll take a big breath in, opposite arm comes up toward the ceiling, reach it through toward the screen, threading the needle. Take it up and out, being sure you're finding a range that's working for you, reach it through. You could stick with just arm movements if that rotation doesn't feel appropriate. Stretch it through. One more time, reach it up and out. Stretch it through. We're gonna come back up to hands and knees. We're gonna realign the belly of the spine. You're gonna tuck that chin gently towards your neck and we're gonna squeeze the shoulder blades together behind your back and press them forward toward the floor. Squeeze those blades, unsqueeze. Squeeze and unsqueeze. Keep this going. If you want to make it more challenging, you could switch to single arm. So the arm that's not on the floor is now resting on your same side thigh. Press one more time. Switch it up. Squeeze and press. If you're sticking with both hands on the floor right now, that's completely fine. We'll just do a few extra of those. The last two and the last one. And we'll take that second hand down to the mat. We're gonna hold him there. We're gonna slide one leg back behind us, pressing that foot into the floor. Press the heels of your hands and the ball of that back foot into the floor. See if you can unweight your other knee. And then gently lower it down. Press and unweight, lower it down. The last time, lower and we'll switch. Opposite leg stretches behind, ball of the foot on the floor. We press and unweight the other knee. Take it down. Press and unweight. Take it down. Last two. And down. Last one. And down. Progression here would be to come up into a full plank. If we're here, we're going to rock side to side. If you're on our fours, we're still going to rock side to side, but maybe bring those knees out behind you a little bit more. Shorten up that lever. We'll rock side to side for four. Three, two, one. We can hold it here or we could add a little push up. Pressing it up. And we'll take those knees back down to the mat for another cat and cow. We'll take it back to neutral for a little tail wag, side to side. We'll take it back to neutral here. And we're going to take one arm forward and the opposite leg back behind the body. Switching through at your own speed. Keep that going. If you want to make this more challenging, we come up to a plank. Lift a leg, opposite arm, and switch it up. Find the progression or modification that's working best for you. We're going to do two more of each here. Take your time. All right, let's go ahead and wrap up here on all fours. We're gonna line our knees up with our hips again and we're gonna take the forearms down to the mat. So your head is going to be lower than your pelvis at this point. If this causes any dizziness or does not feel good for any reason, come back up, bring that head back up. You could support your neck a little bit further 
If you double one fist over the other, place that forehead down on your hands. From here on the forearms or up in hands and knees, we're gonna take one leg and slide it back behind the body with straight knee. We're gonna take that leg up and down, lift and lower. Hold it up there, take it side to side. Try to keep that trunk as still as possible. We'll take that leg back, bend the knee to 90 degrees, and take that knee down and up. Really squeeze through that glute on the moving leg. We'll hold that leg up there, pulse to the ceiling. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Take it back down. We'll slide the other leg out straight and lift it up and down. Hold it up there, take it side to side. Push through those forearms to gain that last little bit of stability. Last one, we'll bring it to the middle. Flex that knee, maybe flex the foot, and we'll take that knee down and up. Last two. Last one. And pulse. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One, let's take that knee back down. We're gonna bring the knees slightly apart, feet together. Draw your bottom back towards your heels and walk those hands forward. Bring that forehead down and we'll take a few breaths here. Inhaling, feel those ribs expand out to the sides. Exhaling, draw those ribs back in toward midline. We're gonna walk our hands away from our screen. Taking a big breath in and a big breath out. We're gonna walk the hands the other direction. Taking a big breath in and a big breath out. We're gonna walk them back to the middle. We'll come up over the forearms again and take those legs back behind the body and we're resting on the upper thighs. Again, we have a little bit of an arch in the back here, that breast is facing forward, but we're gonna to try to keep that navel pulled in toward the spine so that the low back stays aligned and protected. We're gonna hold that there. Bend that right knee, kicking your heel towards your bottom. Kick, kick, straighten out, switch it up. Your goal here would be to keep your back still enough that you could balance something in the small of your back without it moving as those legs move. So if your hips are feeling tight, maybe that knee doesn't bend quite as much and that heel doesn't come quite as close to your bottom. One more time on each. We'll straighten those legs out. We're gonna turn those toes under, put the balls of the feet on the floor. We're gonna come up into a plank on the knees, a forearm plank on the knees, or a full forearm plank, and we'll shift the weight side to side. For three, two, one. Take it back to the center. Knees come down if they've been up. We're gonna come back up to hands and knees for one final round of cat and cow. We'll take it back to neutral and side to side. Let's take it back to the middle. And we're gonna come up into a sitting position. We're gonna still be facing vertically along that mat. We're gonna to try to come up into a narrow V. Okay. If you find that you're tipped really far back, one strategy would be to roll up the back of your mat a little bit to be able to lift your bottom up a little higher. If you really needed something else, you'd be welcome to find a stool, a little footstool, or some kind of a prop that you could put behind you, maybe even a sofa cushion to get you up a little higher. Otherwise, we're gonna get those knees as straight as we can and flex those feet as best you can till that body is upright and vertical, hips are bent about 90 degrees, and those arms come up, lining up with your legs. We're gonna hinge forward and hinge upright. If those knees are bent, to the loop this way, and if your bottom's propped up on something, you'll just be hinging slightly farther forward. We're gonna hinge till we feel the first barrier, that first bit of stretch or resistance through the back of the thighs, and we'll drop your hands down towards your legs. Maybe they touch your feet, maybe they touch your shins, maybe it's your knees or your thighs. We're gonna bring both hands to the leg closest to your screen, and then that arm closest to the screen comes out to the side. Maybe we look over that shoulder and rotate. It's up to you. We're gonna walk our hands around to the other leg. Opposite arm reaches out. Maybe we reach and rotate. And we take it back. We're gonna do one more to each side. Opening up. 
sweeping it back. Last time over to the other side and sweeping it back to the middle. We're going to come upright. We're going to bend the knees and bring those heels up till they line up with your bottom. And we're going to hold on behind your thighs. Your arms should be round like you're holding a beach ball and those shoulders are going to be dropped down and back and the belly drops down. Hold it here. We're going to flex and point the toes. Use that momentum to draw you back and forth a little bit. If you don't have any balance issues, if you have enough cushioning on your mat, and if you don't have any bone density issues or issues with uh, osteoporosis, anything like that, you're welcome to progress this. We could take it back to a roll and then take ourselves up. Roll it back, take ourselves up. Roll it back, keep this going. If you are not comfortable with that back roll, those heels stay down and we flex and point those toes. We're gonna to do one more, whether it's a roll or a flex and point, we'll come back upright and we're gonna take those arms to the outsides of your legs. We're gonna lean back just a little bit farther, keeping those heels on the floor and press the legs and the arms toward each other. Keeping that far arm pressed into your leg, we're gonna open up that arm closest to your screen. Sweep it back to the middle and open up that other arm. Maybe we look over the shoulder and take it center. Even just lifting that arm away without a head turn or without moving that arm out to the side, it's gonna be working those rotation muscles. And back to the center. One more time out to the side and center. And last one on that far arm. We'll take it back to the center. Come upright nice and tall, feet flat on the floor, and we're gonna take those arms back behind your body. We're gonna keep those elbows straight and press your palms into the mat as best you can. With straight elbows now, see if you can squeeze your blades back. If you feel like you're hunching, bring your bottom a little closer to your hands. So we'll find a position where you can make that squeeze, and we're gonna send the breastbone toward the ceiling. As you reach that breastbone up, you'll feel a little more pressure through the heels of the hands, so feel free to fix your hands if you need to move your fingertips out accordingly. And then if you wanna take this farther, we could lift the bottom up to a reverse tabletop position for a few breaths here. Inhaling and exhaling. We could also lift up to some leg extension, trying to keep that pelvis as still as possible. Your hips are a little tight like mine. Your bottom's gonna be below your knees. Your hip flexors are fairly flexible. You may be able to rise it all the way up and maintain that stability. Take a big breath in. On the exhale, we'll bring those hips down. Whether you've lifted your bottom up or not, let's shake out those wrists. Roll those shoulders out. Bend and straighten your elbows a little bit. And just make some circles. Be nice to those arms. We'll roll them back. And we're gonna turn and face that screen. Again, if you have a hard time in cross leg sitting or with those legs out in front of you, feel free to find a chair or something to bolster you up so your hips are higher than your legs. And then we're gonna bring those arms out to the side. We're gonna take a tall side bend one direction, bring the forearm down and the opposite arm up and over. And we'll take it up and over to the other side. Bring it up, take it over. And bring it up, take it over. We're gonna do one more time to each side. And we'll lift it up and side bend that other way. Coming up nice and tall, those arms will stay out to the sides. And we're gonna squeeze those shoulder blades together for eight, seven, pulse, six, five, four, three, two, one. Take them down, roll those shoulders back. And we're gonna come up into a kneeling position. We'll be up in a tall kneel. Again, if you need to give your knees a little more padding, feel free to bunch up your mat, grab a cushion, grab a towel, whatever's working for you, whatever you got handy. And once we're up on those knees, give your glutes a little squeeze. Make sure you're up nice and tall. And we're gonna shoot those arms to the ceiling for a few tall side bends. We're gonna sway side to side like a tree swing in the breeze. Hopefully you got to see a few of those outside today. We'll go one more time to each side. 
We're gonna lift up tall and now take those arms forward, bringing them down to shoulder height so they're parallel to the floor. And we're gonna lean back just a bit into those quads. If your kneecaps don't like this, feel free to stay up nice and tall. Maintain a little bit of that lean, uh, lean back if you can. We're gonna open one arm out to the side and then follow it with your head. We'll sweep it back to the center and switch it up. Sweep it to the center, switch it up, and sweep it to the center, and switch it up. Let's take it right back to the middle. We're gonna bring those arms down. We'll flip those palms forward and take the hands back behind the body as far as you can. We're gonna squeeze those pinkies toward each other for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold it there, big breath in. Exhale it down, and we're gonna take one leg out to the side. Okay. If you need a little bit of balance here, take your hands down to the floor. We're gonna come up nice and tall with the head, hands right on your hips, and we're gonna tip the bottom back, crown of the head forward, and take it up tall. Lean it forward, take it up tall. Last two, and lift. Last one, take it up, arms out to the side, and we're gonna side bend. Take the hand toward the bent leg, opposite arm comes up, and we'll side bend the other way. Let's take it up and over. Feel free to lift that other leg if you wanna challenge it a little more. And side bend, last two, and over, last one, and over. And we'll come up nice and tall, and we're gonna switch sides. Opposite leg comes out straight. Find a point where your foot's stable on the floor, and you feel a little inner thigh stretch, we'll come up nice and tall. Hands on the hips, and we'll tip. Crown the head forward, tailbone back. Take it up tall. Hinge it forward. Take it up. Last two. And up. Last one. Take it up. Arms out to the side, and we're going to side bend toward that bent knee. And up and over the other way. And keep that going. Side bend, maybe we lift that leg. And over. Last two. And last one. Side bend with that leg if you can. We'll take it up and over toward that straight leg. And we'll bring the arms down. And we're gonna make our way down onto our sides. We're gonna keep the knees bent, the heels lined up with the bottom, and we'll rest on that bottom arm. Your arm could be bent for a little more stability. It could be straight if you wanna challenge that position a little bit. So find your level that you're, you're ready for, interested in. Top hand's gonna press into the floor. And with those feet down, we're gonna lift the knees up and down. We're keeping the top of the body stable by pressing through that hand. And we're lifting and lowering those knees in a controlled manner. Last two. Last one, knees come down, and we're gonna bring both feet up off the floor and hold them there. Keeping your feet together, the top knee comes up and down. Keep that going. Last two. Knees come down, feet come down as well. We're gonna keep that top knee bent. Straighten your bottom leg, we'll keep that top Top foot resting on your calf. And again, we're gonna take that top knee down and lift it up. We're moving from that top buttock. If you need a breather at any point, if that hip's getting tired, take a break. If you're feeling it anywhere other than your butt, take a break and reposition. We're gonna lift that knee up, straighten it out. Top hand comes down for a bit of stability and we're gonna swing that top leg forward and back. Keeping it in a range where your trunk stays nice and still, or as still as you can keep it. Last time, swing forward, draw it back, and we'll touch the toes to the floor and lift them up. Down and up. Hold it up there and circle. Two. One other direction. Four. Three. Two. 
one. Hold it up there, bring that bottom leg up, and we'll take everything down and up together. Last one's on the side. Last three, two, one. Big breath in, exhale down, pat out that hip, and we'll come up and over to the other side. And once we're there, we'll go ahead and line ourselves up again. Upper body resting on that bent or straight bottom arm. Knees are bent, heels are lined up with your sit bones. We'll press that top hand into the floor and take everything up and down. Good. Here's four, three, two, and one, knees down, feet come up and stay there. And that top knee again comes up and down, moving from the side of that top cheek. Last four, three, two, one. Knees down, feet come down as well. Top knee stays bent, bottom leg straightens out. We leave that top foot resting on your bottom calf. And we take that top knee down and up. Remembering that maybe this is a time for a little bit of a break. If you're starting to feel it anywhere in the hip other than your gluteal muscle here. Last three, two, one. Straighten out that top leg, top arm to the floor for a little support. And we'll swing that top leg forward and back. We're trying to keep it level as you come forward and back. We're trying to keep that foot at the same height the whole time it's swinging. Let's hold it back behind the body and we'll touch the toes down and up. We'll hold them up and circle for four, three, two, one, and then the other way for four, three, two, one. Hold it there, bring that bottom leg up and we'll take everything down and up together. Keep them going. Here's four, three, two, and one, take them down, pat that hip out, and we're gonna roll to our back. All right, once we're there, we'll cross one leg over the other. Pull them into your chest if you can. If it doesn't feel great to pull them in, feel free to have the other foot down. You could press out on that thigh. If they're pulled in, we could rock side to side gently to deepen that stretch. And we'll come right back to the middle and switch our legs. And again, maybe we pull them in, maybe we have the foot down, maybe we press that knee out to the side a bit. If we're pulled in, we'll rock side to side. One more breath here. We'll exhale, unwind those legs, pull both knees in and rock everything side to side. Let's go ahead and take those feet down. We're going to roll ourselves back over to hands and knees. Another few cats and cows just to work those kinks out. Another couple tail wags, same deal. We could make our way right up to standing. We could come through a plank. We could do a couple of push ups if you're interested. We can come up to that down dog. Position, knees bent or straight. You can walk the feet out a little. Drop those heels down. Take a big breath in. And on the exhale, we're gonna walk the hands and feet toward each other. And we're gonna make our way up to standing, however is most comfortable for you. We're gonna finish up class with a little bit of balancing. If you need something to hold on to, feel free to use your wall, a chair, a foam roller if you have one, anything that's working that's around can give you a little bit of just input so that you can keep yourself balanced. We're going to start our last sequence just like we did the beginning of class. Feet are hip width apart. We're going to line ourselves up with our center of gravity right over the front of the ankle joints. We'll take the hands to the midsection and shift forward and back a couple of times. Back to the center and we'll shift side to side a couple of times. And let's make some circles around that base of support. Again, thinking about that string at the crown of your head, pulling you up nice and tall. 
We'll circle the other way. We'll come right back over the front of the ankle joints here. And with the arms down by your sides or hanging on to something if you need it, we're gonna shift the weight toward the balls of the feet. Just enough that your heels hover up off the floor. Picture a diver on a board getting ready for a back dive. Keeping the weight toward the balls of the feet, we're slowly gonna rise up onto the toes as far as you're comfortable doing so. If we come all the way up to the toes, the weight shifts forward a little farther. Maybe from here, we take those arms up to the ceiling and we hold them there. We keep the weight forward as we bring those feet down to the mat and take those arms down. Again, reassess if you need something to hold on to. We're gonna stand heel to toe. One foot comes up in front of the other and we'll stand up tall, that string at the crown of the head pulling us up again. For a little more challenge, look side to side. Rotate along the axis of that string that's pulling the crown of your head up. Looking back to the middle, we'll go ahead and switch. Stand and heel the toe on the other side, put the other foot in front. Coming up nice and tall, if you want to progress this, you can look side to side again, over one shoulder and over the other shoulder. Maybe noticing a little bit of wobbling in your feet when those eyes aren't able to help you with stability as much as they sometimes can. We're gonna shift the weight to one foot, bring that other foot up in parallel. Maybe it touches your calf. It could be a way. You could also have a little kickstand down if you need a little bit of support. We're gonna balance here, maybe shifting the weight toward the ball of the foot, maybe taking it up and down a bit. Take your time here. Let's go ahead and switch legs. Shift it over, maybe using a kickstand if you need it. Foot on the calf or foot away. We could shift it forward and take it up and down, keeping that weight toward the ball of the foot and shifting a little farther forward, the higher we go. Let's go ahead and come down, shake those feet out. We'll take them shoulder width apart, spread those toes apart a little bit. We'll take a big breath in, arms come up. Let's clasp the palms, take those hands to the ceiling and drop your blades down. And we'll take it side to side, reaching for a tall side bend to one corner. And then up and over for a tall side bend to the other corner. Let's take those arms to the ceiling. Arms come down by your sides. We'll take one more big breath in, reaching those hands up. We'll exhale them down to the center. And thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, I apologize for any technical difficulties we might have had a little bit here, and I hope to see you guys next time. Enjoy your evening.